Welcome back to Axel Beats, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this week's anime. For those of you who missed it, this week we watched The Ancient Magus Bride. And for next week, you all voted so that we'll be watching Princess Mononoke, and pretty overwhelmingly. I'll put up another poll about the same time that this video goes live, so be sure to let me know if you want to watch Link Click, a Chinese mystery anime about people who can dive into the lives that are captured in photographs, or Made in Abyss an adventure anime all about a young girl journeying into a massive, monster-filled chasm called the Abyss to find her mother waiting at the bottom. Each of these two shows has a season 2 coming out relatively soon, so I thought they'd be fun to include in this series. If you enjoy these weekly discussion and analysis videos, remember to leave a like to let me know to keep making them, a comment to let me know what you thought of Ancient Magus Bride, and of course subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. With all the YouTube stuff out of the way though, let's talk about The Ancient Magus Bride. Spoilers and all. The Ancient Magus Bride shows us a world filled with magic and wonder, all through a surprisingly pessimistic lens, especially early on. Chize Hattori is a slaybeggy, a human born with unbelievable capability for both absorbing and creating magical energy at the expense that they will quickly drain away their own life. This makes her a target for all manners of monster and fae called neighbors in this show, but at least while she was young, she was still protected by her parents. Eventually, though, things would change. While she was still a child, her father took her brother and abandoned both Chize and her mother Chika, leaving Chika alone to pick up several jobs to provide for Chize. But she became exhausted, and as more and more fae appeared, she became anxious and depressed, eventually beginning to hallucinate and hear voices that expressed that all her misery was because of her daughter. The neighbors who had been harassing them wanted Chize, not her, and if Chize was out of the picture, she could live freely. Driven to a brief insanity, Chika tries to strangle Chize in her sleep, however at the last moment she's unable to go through with it. She snaps back into reality and manages to stop herself from killing her daughter, but unable to deal with what she had done, she walks to the balcony, asks for forgiveness, and falls to her death in front of Chize. From this point on, Chize is now alone. Both of the people who were supposed to love her more than anyone else, the people who she was supposed to be able to rely on more than anyone else, had left her behind and seen her to be a burden. Her father couldn't deal with the neighbors being brought to her, so he left, and her mother said that she should have never been born, even trying to kill her. To Chize, her life was a mistake, a burden on those around her, and ultimately the mental scars left behind by her mother would cause her to forget any kindness or happiness that she had experienced up until the moment that her mother snapped. From here, she was alone in the dark and had lost any sense of home or belonging that she had. Over the next few years, she would be so miserable that she completely gave up on life, not caring if she lived or died, and ultimately choosing to sell herself as a slave at auction, where she is purchased by Elias to become his apprentice. And here's where her story begins to shift. Elias doesn't understand emotion, he isn't particularly warm, and he's slow to share things about himself. But he values Chize. He wants her to be around, and he will actively fight to keep her in his life. Elias might not have known what it actually meant when he said that Chize was his family, but someone actually saying that she was wanted was more than monumental for her. Or as Chize herself would go on to describe it in the last words of the season, I'm home. And this is what I consider to be the most important theme in The Ancient Magus Bride, the idea of home and belonging. While the series covers plenty of challenging topics, the idea of fairness in suffering, desperation, trauma, technology versus magic or nature, as well as immortality versus mortality. I think that the search for and need of a home is something that permeates through every character in a much more pressing way than any other theme that's presented. As I mentioned, Chize loses a home and begins to find one when she's purchased by Elias. However, it isn't until characters like Ruth, Silver, Alice, and everyone else is brought into her life that Chize actually begins to feel at home. Yes, she appreciated having a place to live with Elias, but it's the connection that she builds with those around her that actually creates a home. If you have a bit of a live, laugh, love Instagram mom like I have, you've probably heard the phrase, a house is not a home without a cat. Or you might have heard William Golding's quote about women making things greater, like turning a house into a home. 
The amount of proverbs that suggest that a house is not always a home is staggering. But the idea is true, a house is just a building. However, the connections built with those who live there are able to turn that building into something special. It's not just a place anymore, it's a place where you belong. And that search for belonging, that search for a home, is something that the majority of the characters in the series really struggle with. Ruth, at first, is not able to accept what or who he is. Alice has parents who force her to use drugs and go on drug runs. Silver was this banshee who had lost her clan and been left alone by herself. Angelica originally refuses to build a family because she knows that while she and her children would live forever, whoever she marries will eventually die. Shannon was swapped at birth with a human baby, and even Jacob lives in this town that harasses and torments him for being a gravekeeper and yearns to leave and find somewhere better. And it's only through coming in contact with others that they begin to find places that they belong. With the help of those that come into their lives, they can change the way they live and begin to find homes. And while Chize is obviously our main lens for the series, Elias is just as much searching for a home, despite not really understanding what emotions are to begin with. To him, he's just looking for this intangible thing that's leaving him incomplete. Elias is neither human nor fey. He doesn't fit in with mortals, but magical beings also just pity him or have this feeling of separation. He has never belonged anywhere, and even while Lindell might consider him as a pseudo-son, which is hinted at when he calls Chize his granddaughter, or hell, even if Lindell just considers him to be a friend, Elias himself never really truly felt or understood what a family was. Which is why when he buys Chize, he isn't just looking for her to be his apprentice, he wants her to be his wife as well. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that the first emotion that Elias actually comes to understand is loneliness, this feeling that the house was cold and empty when Chize was away. They spend a lot of time and focus on this question Elias has of why the house, this building he's lived in for however many years, suddenly feels different. To Elias, who doesn't know what a family or a home is, nothing should have changed just because one other person wasn't there. People had entered and left his house countless times, but he's never felt this cold before. And it's through embracing and understanding this loneliness that he begins to understand what a home is. That said, while both Chize and Elias say that they are family starting very early on in the series, I think Elias is probably one of the last ones to actually form a true bond with Chize. They do have this dependency on each other, but each of them keep these walls up that stop things from actually progressing in any tangible or meaningful way. And that is doubly true on Elias's part. On the other hand, characters like Ruth or Alice are able to open up to Chize in very heartfelt ways almost immediately. However, within the last few episodes after Chize and Elias have their big fight, things begin to change once again. They begin being more honest with what they think, what they need, and what they want, and there's this real change in how they hold themselves as well as how they interact with each other. This builds up to a final peak when Chize calls Elias out to the forest, where he finds her in a white dress and veil, and she gives him a ring that matches her own. And from this point on, she has become the ancient Magus' bride. And it's only once these two become a real family that Chize says she is home. There are a lot of really beautiful things that this series has to offer. Wonderful magics, stunning illustrations and music, characters who you just want to root for, Titania, just, just Titania, as well as extremely powerful themes throughout that make every interaction between characters just feel so much more important than they might have felt otherwise. But out of everything that this show offers, I think that the way it deals with this idea of belonging and finding a home was easily the thing that I appreciated the most in the series. It isn't just that the good guys wanted to have this nice thing, but everyone did. Humans, Fae, Slaybeggy, Mages, Alchemists, Dragons, and even the villain Joseph. Really the only character who didn't seem that they were looking for a home was Ashenai, and he's more of an agent of chaos than anything good or evil itself. But even in his case, he seems to actively want to interact with Elias, with Chize, and with Joseph. Obviously not in the most helpful of ways all the time, but, you know, he's around. And even so, this idea that everyone feels out of place sometimes, and that if you actually take the time and put in the effort to search for it, you will eventually find a home through the people who mean the most to you, was something that I just really loved about this story. Are you what beautiful is?